There it is. Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 86 of the Self-Publishing Roundtable, the podcast for indie authors by indie authors, where we discuss today's topics and issues that matter to the business of the self-published author. I am your moderator, Wade Finnegan, and my co-panelists are Michelle Reed. Hi, Michelle. Hello. And Xavier Granville. Hello, Internet. <laughs> And our special panelist for this episode is Aaron Sykes. Hi, Aaron. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, Aaron, if you don't know already, is a professional editor. He has uh, worked with the likes of uh, Carl Sinclair and Darren Wearmouth and some other uh, top-notch authors, and all of them have raved things to say about him and his ability to catch the things that they miss, um, and he's also known for his exceptional rapport with his writers, so um, we, we had a lot of people asking about editing questions, and Aaron had popped on uh, with Nicholas Smith for a little while there, but we wanted a little more Aaron to ourselves, so we, <laughs> we brought him back. So, uh, Aaron, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. Uh, everybody hopefully is watching live. Make sure that you uh, leave some questions. Uh, anything you got uh, you want answered, now is the time to do that. Um, we'll try to make our best efforts to get them a conversation if Michelle will do her job right. So there you go. Um, what did you leave? <laughs> uh, at the end of the show, will you please, please, please give us a review on iTunes or give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Every social media share, like, all that sort of stuff helps keep the show viable. So... We would appreciate that. Uh, just a little note, quick note, our uh, contest, our short story flash fiction contest ended last week, and Xavier is pouring over the entries, and we'll make a decision soon, I think, maybe in, next, I know, week. Uh, next week. Next week. Next week. I don't want to put you under pressure, but okay, next week. So uh, we'll, have, we'll announce a winner there, and uh, the winner gets a free cover and a book, but a free cover from Mr. Granville, which is totally awesome, so... Nah, I, I, I like the fact that everyone gets the 1,000 creative writing prompts from Brian Cohen. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That's Just because I like saying Brian Cohen. Yeah, that's a type of, that's the, that should be a radio name, right? Yeah, Brian Cohen, now your host. Right? It's a good anyway. name to just say, in general. Brian <laughs> Cohen. <laughs> All Speaking right. Of good things, can I just say real quick, this is the best picture of Aaron. He's got the best picture. I want to make it my profile picture. Okay, so what do you mean? With what the hat? You, oh, with the hat? Oh, the side? Yeah. Most, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah one. I, do, I do hats. Yeah, so I like I'm just going to take that. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah it's, very, it's very scurvy and nervy. I love it. <laughs> that that oh, makes you look totally different. That's like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, a, that's like a Terry Pratchett hat. That Exactly, yeah. I, I, I wore it on the day of his passing, and we went to the pub, and, and uh, it was good to me when I was drinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's what a hat should be. The one, the one yeah. thing I could say about his passing was that the the internet was such a flood of great quotes from all of his yeah. books. That, yeah, so, so like, much love for him. Really? Yeah. No, it was it was wonderful. Like you know, like rest yeah. in peace. Obviously, you know, and the guy was battling dementia for so long that you know, like mm-hmm. it's it's a, it's a wonder that he was able to put out the books that he could and during the time uh, alive, let alone. When he was diagnosed with a, you know, a deadly disease yeah. that was affecting his mind, like yeah, yeah, he still he still put out a, over a dozen books or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was really a, a testament just to his his will to be a writer. You know that just, mm-hmm. that's who he was, and yeah. And just the f- the funniest guy. I, I like. Uh, I've been listening through audiobooks of uh, the Discworld series. I, I've read through quite a few of them, and now I'm I'm back onto audiobooks just because I love to hear uh, out loud those little jokes that he puts in. And some of them are just you know so in the middle of a large phrasing of you know crazy imaginative magic stuff and then suddenly you'll just have some sort of reference to a wild flight of geese or something like that just <laughs> a, 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 a random yeah. something that just ma- takes you out of the book where you kind of put it off to the side and you go okay <laughs> I, I want to laugh before I keep reading <laughs> Yeah, ex- exactly and you want to contain that laughter because you want to keep going <laughs> Yeah, 
All right. Well, okay. So good little Terry Pratchett stuff. Now we got to uh, nail Aaron with some questions. So who wants to right. start off? We didn't. We probably should have done the pre-show, but we're not that professional. Right. So anybody who have Fire a question? <laughs> we did something in the pre-show. Yeah. Well, we can't mention that on the air. YouTube will pull us. You know. <laughs> yeah. I think John. I think John's doing it in the other room. Actually, if you want to go. <laughs> Okay, I'm not going there. All right. <laughs> First real question. Anybody want to take it or? Is... No, you go. Okay, then it's I'll me. It. <laughs> we, we always go first. We always go first. All right, I'll go first. Um, so, I kind of want to know, and I think others hopefully do, the the initial uh, exchange of uh, a manuscript. How 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 much should I expect uh, to get back? Uh, from you is it, is it is it tiered? Is it like you know? Okay, if I pay you for this amount, you'll give me this much feedback. It seems like um, there's a lot of uh, differences of opinion about how much feedback an editor should give and what sort of thing. So, kind of a broad question to start off with. But what do you? How do you structure that for your amount of feedback you give? Okay, let me let me break that apart into at least two answers. Um, Largely, so short answer. It largely depends upon what you have asked for. And if you if you've looked at my website or if you've looked at other editors' websites, you'll probably see that there are different types of editing that are offered. Um, the the biggest job can be the content developmental structural substantive edit, which is where you're looking at a manuscript as though it's not complete yet. It's a, a draft. It's an idea. There's the the whole story is there, um, from you know the word go to the end of the plot, but lots of stuff is probably jumbled around. Uh, there's some inconsistencies that are going to be present. The characters aren't quite developed the way they need to be. Um, so for an edit like that, you can expect not quite so many in-text comments, but the ones you get are going to be pretty big, because I'm as I'm reading, I'm going to I'll hit something that says, okay, this character should not be doing this. <laughs> because the way you established her at the beginning, right now I'm seeing a schizoid on the page. Or I'm looking at somebody who has decided to be a psychopath all of a sudden. Or Unless you're going wrong. for that, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, and if you're going for that, you really need to give me better signposts up above. Because yeah. I'm for, not seeing your character me. do this right here. <laughs> exactly. So I'm going to point all that out in the first comment. You know, where I see a character acting crazy like that, I'm going to point it out in a comment, and it's going to be a little detailed. and get It'll go in depth. Um, but you, you won't get as many of those in the, in the manuscript when I send it back. What you will get is a very detailed, exhaustive edit letter that can be as long as 15 or 20 pages, where I'm breaking down all of those comments and expanding on them in a way that um, aims to, to, to point you in the right direction for fixing things. So I'm lining things out like, here's a good first step. You know, take your characters out of the manuscript and write a little bit about them answering these questions. You know, what would they do in their happiest moment? Um, how would they respond to an incident of trauma against someone they love or against themselves? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll suggest you do a little bit of a character study, for example, um, as a starting point. Once you've got that, then your revisions are going to be easier because you're going to know your characters better. You're going to have a better idea of how to proceed with revising the rough spots that I've picked out in the manuscript itself. Um, so, you know, going back to the question, how much can you expect? If you've asked me for a developmental edit, you're going to get not as much in the manuscript, but a lot in the edit letter that really aims at helping you in your revisions to, to make it as efficient and easy for you as possible. Um, the most recent project I did, I included a plot beat analysis for the writer. I said, you know, you've, you've got your plot beats here, but they're a little bit jumbled, they aren't quite complete in places, and you're missing kind of a critical one here. <laughs> um, and so that was just, you know, plot beat one, two, and so on. And I pointed back to the manuscript showing him, you know, here in this paragraph, in this chapter, this is where you address this plot beat. But the next plot beat is missing. You know, and you, you've got it started in this paragraph, in this chapter, but you don't finish it. That's that's what you can expect from a developmental edit. So it, it can it can feel like a lot. Um, copy editing, you're going to see more in-text comments. They'll tend to be shorter. They'll be addressing specific things like punctuation, grammar, spelling, fact-checking <laughs> errors, inconsistencies. Um, 
not so much in the edit letter usually. So that okay. Yeah. How uh, much so is too much? Like, if we just type a bunch of crap and send it to you, like, <laughs> how, how good does it much? need so, to be before we um, send it to you? Well, again, that kind of goes back to what are you asking for? What are you what are you hoping to receive? Um, in my initial communications with it, with all my writers, I ask for a sample. And what I want is a sample from the thing you're planning to send me in the state you're planning to send it to me in. Uh, so if you give me two chapters of absolute dreck that I can't get through without, you know, a machete, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to get back to you and I'm going to reply and say something to the effect of this, this to me, looks like it needs a very strong developmental edit. Mm -hmm. I would recommend a developmental consultation. <laughs> I do mm -hmm. offer those, you know, one hour Skype or Google Hangout, mm -hmm. and we can talk about your plot, we can talk about where you want to go with these characters, but what I'm not seeing is a developed story idea on the page. I'm not seeing developed prose, I'm not seeing developed dialogue, everything feels stilted. You know? okay. And I'll communicate that as gently and as, and as compassionately and respectfully as I can. Mm -hmm. um, the Which idea I'm is not sure to ever browbeat anybody. Way. Right. So yeah, can you, know, you do like a... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Can you do like a, I have this story idea, should I write it? Like is this, do you do that? Um, I guess that could go into, you know, if you wanted to do a developmental consult with me, it's, it's uh, if you're just kind of testing the waters and like, hey, I've got an idea. You know, it's, for me, it's 70 bucks an hour. I'll sit down with you. We'll talk about your idea. And the goal that I have is to, by the end of it, your takeaway is going to be a beat sheet with all of your plot beats. Mm-hmm. And an arc for your main your main protagonist. That's what you should come away from the, the discussion That's with. That's so great. Mm -hmm. And and that that should be enough to get you started. Um, if you're not sure about the quality of a story idea, to me that that signals a writer who either doesn't have a lot of experience or is concerned about maybe audience reception. Um, but that will be stuff to talk about in the in the console. In the console, you get a hold of them and you pay your fee for the hour and you talk about whatever. Is that just purchasing your time to talk about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you if you want to commit to an actual project, like if you've got a manuscript, and or at least you've, you know say you've got thirty thousand words written, maybe you did NaNoWriMo, mm -hmm. you got fifty thousand words down, mm -hmm. but they just it's like word salad. <laughs> what am I going to do with this? <laughs> Can I do anything with it? Stuff. Um, yeah. Um, you know, so we we do a consult, and you can do the seventy dollar hour. And that's it. No, no obligations after that. Um, you pay up front. We talk for an hour. We we shake hands. That was great. Um, if you feel a little more committed to it, you can uh, buy the console for free. <laughs> um, but you're committing to a retainer to actually book the project on my calendar, and that saves you about fifteen twenty dollars. It's like a fifty or sixty dollar fee for that. Um, and that money goes towards the payment of the actual project, so it's it's just like my my retainer for anything. Um, so that would be for people who feel a little more committed, a little more confident about their their story ideas, rather than should I write it, should I not write it? It's you know how do I write it? <laughs> so David Anson uh, asks uh, yeah. in the comments. Uh, he wants to know how about how long does it take you to do a copy edit, say like of a like an eighty thousand mm -hmm. word book. Assuming it's not in too bad a shape. Oh, long silence. I hate okay. that. Um, so, oh. hey, we have some lag in there. Um, okay. Assuming, assuming it's in good shape. Uh oh, are we still here? Yeah, yep. I hear you. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, assuming it's in good shape, then I can get through between ten and fifteen thousand words a day. Uh, on my work day, and like we were talking about earlier before we, we got going, it's, uh, you know, I, I work from about 9 to 2 with a little bit of time in the afternoon and the evening um, when I'm not doing parenting duties <laughs> um, that I can devote to a project. So, you know, I like to book at least 10 days for every project. That gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Um, but on average, I think I, I tend to turn around, you know, between 7 and 10 days is a good good benchmark. Okay. Okay. Uh, Michelle, you want to take Kate's question? Yes, I do. Do it. Find it. <laughs> okay. Oh, 
Uh, how do you recommend we tackle our revisions before we send it to you? And I think she means the first time. Right. Um, kind, so of, how, kind of has to do with my question a minute ago. Yeah. How, how do you know when you're ready for an editor? Right, um, right. Because if, you, if you've just finished NaNoWriMo, you're not. <laughs> um, so how do you go from, from that? The, the, yeah, you, you're not usually ready. It, it can happen, and it does. Um, but you have to, first of all, kind of know what it is you need from the editor. Do you, do you need a developmental edit where content and structure are going to get worked on? If that's, if that's your thing, you know, do you know story structure? Can you point to the plot beats? Do you have a beat sheet written out? Um, can you describe your character's arc? If you can't do those things, not in an elevator speech way, but in a, in a coherent, clear way, um, you need to be able to do that before you approach an editor. Um, if, if that feels confusing or, or it seems like I'm trying to put no, people no. off, the, 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 the aim is to give an editor the best material you can so that you can get what you're asking for. And if you're asking for a developmental edit, there has to be enough of the characters on the page for me to be able to say, okay, your character's behaving wrong over here. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't have dialogue that's clear, if you don't have descriptive text that shows their actions consistently across scenes of action and, and calm, um, then I, I can't really get a picture of them. And I'm going to go on the first thing you show me about them, and that's going to be what leads me through the book. So... It could be you just haven't fleshed your character out enough. You've got their arc and everything figured out perfectly. You know all the plot beats, but the character's just not on the page yet. Um, it's always good to get beta reads done first, whether you're going for a developmental or a copy edit. Make sure you've got... I would, I would recommend a minimum of five. <laughs> and these don't have to be solid, you know, every word gets read, but you do want people to read your book and get back to you with feedback that's that's critical. Not, yeah, I liked it. You know, we all have people that will do that for us. We all have yes men and yes women in our lives. Mm -hmm. We don't want those people beta reading our stories. <laughs> we want people who that's are going to read helpful. our stories. It's not. You know, it, it, it makes you feel good, which is great. <laughs> you know, writers need that. We need encouragement. Um, we know I don't. You know, <laughs> well, you don't know. Yeah, yeah I, all do. Creatures I do. I do. Come on. <laughs> I, I just, just say no, I don't, and then sulk off to the corner. <laughs> exactly. You know, you, you you grab the Jim Beam or whatever your poison of choice is. <laughs> you go and suffer for a while, and you get back to it. Um, but no, you know, we're we're solitary laborers, and so we need that assistance from outside to feel good about what we're doing sometimes. And at least to know that we're on track. Yeah, and if, if that's what the person is able to do when they say, I liked it, and they're able to give you a little bit more that helps you believe, yeah, okay, I'm on track, good. But a good beta read is going to also point out um, where things get dicey, unclear, uh, you know, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, <laughs> you know, all, all the little fiddly bits that just don't work. Um, uh -huh, yeah. They may not be able to articulate why it doesn't work. They may not be able to point out what's wrong with it, but they can say something's wrong here. And if you've got that in hand, then you can go to your editor and say, I've had beta readers look at it. They've said there's something wrong with this chapter or this character or this action scene, and I don't know how to fix it, and they don't know what's wrong with it. You know, then that, that lets me that opens the door for me to do my job. Do you do a, a, like a package deal where you would do a developmental ed edit and then send it back and then we take it, go around with it, and then you do a copy edit? Um, I haven't done that yet. Most of the, actually every client that I've worked with has just wanted kind of one thing. Um, and what I, what I do offer is a second read through of material. Um, so whichever it's going to be, development or, or copy, I will, I do offer a free, you know, as part of the package, second read of anything you change, any significant additions, um, and I also review everything that you've done to address the comments that I insert. So when I come across character inconsistency or, or you know, major plot hole <laughs> um, or fact-checking problems where you've got people using weapons that either don't exist or they could not have access to or, you know, whatever it is, um, I'll keep that document open. I'll, I'll fast forward through all of my comments. I'll fast forward through your manuscript and see what you did to address them. And I'll either, you know, praise you for fixing it perfectly or at least give you a, a high five for it. 
or tell you, eh, not quite, you know, something's still missing here. And I'll do the same with anything new that you add in, anything big or significant, um, like a new paragraph or a new chapter, a new scene, you know, total change of an action scene, anything like that. I'll look at, you know, do a complete line edit because um, it's new material. Okay. Um, uh, another question, I don't know where it was from, the, from who, but what advice mm -hmm. would you offer about when to stop the edit cycle and move on to, like, polishing it up and getting it ready to go? Because some people seem to get stuck in that that editing mm -hmm. bit forever. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the this kind of goes back to yeah, yeah. It, you know, and it's easy to do. Um, you feel like you're making progress. You know, it's like oh, I'm changing things. I'm fixing them. They're getting better. I did it. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> this goes back to to the previous question, kind of. You know, you have to know what you need from an editor, and then you should do your best to mirror what the traditional publishing industry has done. Um, you can say what you want about gatekeepers, but the traditional publishers have done something very well. They sell a lot of books. And the way they do it is they they do, they do follow a procedure. You get a developmental edit, then you get a copy edit. You may need another copy edit, but yeah. eventually you get a proofreader. And once you get your proofreading done, that's it. That's a real you, deal. You get your final proofreading, and then, then once you've got to that point, it's time to hit the publishing button. And just yeah. get on with it. Yeah, I, but you have to do all of those steps. Don't try to mm -hmm. shortcut. Don't, you know, I made the mistake myself. <laughs> and it, it doesn't come out well. Um, you know, and this, admittedly, a lot of, you know, what gets self-published gets slagged on because the writer didn't follow those steps. Um, okay. Okay. And so you're not a proofreader. A proofreader is something else? Yeah, I, I used to offer proofreading, but it it's not work that I enjoy, <laughs> um, and it's not work that I feel very good at. Mm -hmm. I My skill set and my perspective about writing tends to be much more big picture and the minutia of fact-checking, but when it comes to looking at every single word in a sentence mm -hmm. and making sure that they're like all spelled that correctly... <laughs> And all the all the punctuations right, mm -hmm. <laughs> that stuff, not me. That, I yeah, love that part. I hate tough. thinking about the whole picture. I oh, would no, rather just fix periods and stuff. Well, and and that's what I appreciate so much more about a, a developmental editor, like a copy editor. Like I have a copy editor, and I love him. Like Jason Whited mm -hmm. is amazing, as far as the things that he's done for the novel that I've done. Like. He's he's done great work, and um, you know he's done things uh, that a developmental editor would have done anyways. But it was the fact that I had about six to eight uh, different beta readers before even getting that point where I was thinking about sending it out to an editor that I was considering hiring on an editor. So it, the fact that it had been through that many people was the only reason that I thought maybe I can skip that step and go straight to a copy editor because mm -hmm. there's that many people. But, you know, I totally agree that you, you, you need a lot of eyes on yeah. the product, no matter what. Whether Absolutely. you're paying the person or you're just, you know, sending it out. Like, if you're not going to get any honesty from family and direct friends. Uh, Try to find some people online that maybe are, you know, strangers. You know, like offer out to you know rev review their book in in return for uh, beta reading for you. Like, there's there's lots mm -hmm. of ways that that you, that you can find different people, but you need to have that kind of almost re removed uh, person that will look at it critically. But at the same time, they 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 want to help you out, obviously, because it's a piece of art and it's it it it's it means something to you. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's a really good point. You don't have to pay people for all these different types of editing. If you can find people you trust that are giving you feedback that yeah, this feels authentic, this is helping me, go with it. Absolutely, go with it. Um, you know, as independents, we don't have a traditional publishing house behind us with their bankroll. So, you know, we right. have to find the most economic means to do it. 
Yeah, we uh, they have a legion, and it, if you can find a legion, mm -hmm. then that emulates that to it as much, you know, as close as possible as you can get to that. Because you do yeah. want to have that dozen of people just saying, this is okay, but it needs work. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Roland Denzel had a, a great question, I thought. Um, I think Michelle said too, yeah. Uh, do you edit the work of authors you read, or is it too hard when you're close to them? <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> um, I don't think I can be too close to an author um, as their editor. Uh, no, I mean, let's start with the very first book that I ever edited was for uh, Colin Barnes, and it was a beta read, but I approached the task. It was, it was my first, like, beta read that I was going to do for a fellow author, and I was like, I'm going to do this serious, you know, because like, like we were just talking about, you know, you find people that you can trust, that you have a, a good remove from. They're mm -hmm. not immediate friends or family. But they're there's in the whole other already, country you know? from you. Yeah, like, he's across the pond. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... So I, I, you know, I, I did a full beta read of the novel that he was writing, and I sent it back to him, and I approached it as I would an editing task. You know, I have my backgrounds in teaching, and so when I got a manuscript in front of me from a student, you know, I went through it, and I looked for everything and, and fixed up everything I could, marked out things that weren't working. Um, and that's that's pretty much what I did for Colin, and he turned around and said, "I really should have paid you for that, and the next time I'm going to." So here, <laughs> and you know, we went from there. Um, you know, and I, I still consider him one of my, my best uh, fellow writers, best friends on the internet, and you know, someday I hope to sit down and share a pint with him. <laughs> um, but I, and, and I read everything that he writes because I love it, and I think that that's really the key to finding an editor you can work with is they have to love your stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, that's that's the editor you want is the editor who's going to go, give me your next book, come on, write it, write it, write it. <laughs> yeah, you want them to be one of your fans. In your really yeah, corner, as you will, right? kind, of, kind of like exactly. a good corner man, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you really do. Yeah, that's that's the person you want editing for you. And if you can't yeah. get that kind of person, that's fine. You know, there are fully qualified editors out there that are not going to rave about your work as a reader would. But if you can find the editor who does, go <laughs> mm -hmm. hire that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and and that's that's what I mean about uh. M Whenever I get uh, messages from Jason White and and even just like face Facebook comments, mm -hmm. even if I just say, "Hey, how's your day?" It's good. How's Dinosaur Noir coming along? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. Well, I, I I might be working. I might. I, I'm 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 not I'm not working. You right, I'm on be, Facebook. <laughs> I shouldn't be. <laughs> you, you, should be work, you should be working on that other book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> Uh, Follow-up question to that, then, Aaron. Uh, is there any genres that you won't tackle? I mean, uh, and we'll go. We'll go ahead and throw out the erotica thing. But I'm just saying, seriously, like any, because I know the the stuff that I know you've edited has been kind of like sci-fi, fantasy, that sort of thing. So sure, uh, yeah. You won't tackle. Um, I think the only book. Well, okay, I've, I've turned down one client before, and I think I mentioned this on the podcast with Nick. It's uh, somebody who had had their book translated. Their native. Their First language was Hindi. Yeah, oh, and the, I don't remember English. this story. Yeah, I do remember this. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they had it translated from Hindi to English, and they were going to send me the English manuscript and ask me to edit it. And I'm like, I can't touch that. <laughs> I don't know anything in Hindi. <laughs> so all of these translated idioms to me are going to be gibberish, and mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to help you fix this at all. Um, that's one case where I would not approach a, a, a job. As far as genres or types of story that I wouldn't touch. You know, any of the triggers, like if you're going to advocate rape, racism, child abuse, you know, anything that's illegal, <laughs> no. Yeah, in a um, positive way. Yeah. If you're going to have it in your story in a way that it features as part of the plot, oh, okay, you know, but yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna make, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire and make sure you're doing it in a way that it doesn't show up as spectacle. Yes. Because I'm, yeah. I'm not going to have my name as an editor associated with a book that has a rape scene for the sake of showing a woman being attacked. That no, <laughs> yeah. if it figures in the Good. plot for a reason, okay. So well, and that and that ties into the whole. Every author puts in their morals to their work. I think every editor should as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. that's what I try and do. 
So like a romantic comedy though or something, you would you would be willing to do that. It doesn't oh, yeah. you're not Okay. Yeah, okay. Send I, them I thought maybe some, some editors only like tackled certain stories or something like that, so I wasn't sure. The worst you can do well, is say no wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean one yeah. one thing that that just kinda you know, to to kinda go to that question, um I am not your editor if you're writing historical romance. I don't read historical mm -hmm. romance. I don't particularly care for it. I don't have the knowledge base for it. Um, I'm not familiar with the genre well enough to know where the plot beats should be or what they should look like. So I'm the wrong guy for that. Um, if you write post-apocalyptic thrillers, I think I've got a good track record with them. Go ahead and send it my way. I think we can work something out. If you're writing anything to do with the military, I can probably help you. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so on... On your website, you you had said that it uh, for spec fiction, like spec speculative fiction, that that's kind of your forte, yeah. your yeah. will forte, yeah. if you will. Right. <laughs> yeah, but I've also got a background in linguistics and art history, um, you know, with an emphasis on architectural history, uh, culinary training, lots of different things. Wow. So, you know, I can I try to I try to use all of that as best I can. Um, You'll have your you know, life course meal. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, well, you do want to have those things to draw upon, you know, and that that's sure. like a, uh, especially with military things, especially when you're going in for those genre specific things. Um, I remember uh, for the manuscript for uh, Dinosaur Noir Number One, and uh, mm -hmm. there's a character that was ex-military, and uh, my editor had just kind of said like, well. He, he's referring to this guy as this, but you know it would much make sense more if you had just referred to him as a shit house rat, mm -hmm. because that's a very that's a very military term, and as much as even though this is an alternate world, you know that would be a thing that if someone who was in military were to read that, they're like, yeah, that just that that reads fine. Yeah, yeah, that's. That's a great point. You know, it's um, every genre has its own lexicon, mm -hmm. and you know, every word and every sentence has a job to do. And if you've got a phrase that stands out because it fits into a particular community of speakers, like the one you re you just mentioned, um, you should put it in there. Why not? Because your audience is is going to comprise a lot of those people, and so <laughs> you know, yeah, that's going to exactly. get their attention. It's it's going to it's going to make the book feel more. Like it was written for them. Yeah, and I think and as an author, that's that's every author's goal, right? And in that certain sense, you know, it's a noir esque type of uh, book where you want to have that kind of pulp feel to it. So, uh, sure. you know, th those kind of comments when you get back from editors are are great because you know, as much even if you know, personally, I'm I'm young. I'm only 26 years old, so I I shut my, up, Xavier. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. Shut up! What? Yes. I, I can't hear you. Put my earring in. <laughs> I know. I know. Turn it up, won't you? You deserve uh, my pills. Cookie. Uh -huh. but that's what, so, so most of my education on the noir esque feeling, like I, I personally can't really relive those moments of being back in the day. So my, my kind of uh, uh, knowledge of these things come from books and come from. Uh, movies and stuff like that. So, when there's little contextual things that you know, obviously because of a generation gap, that there's mm -hmm. you, there's going to be little things that you're not going to understand, or otherwise we're not there to witness firsthand to to really have the best grasp of. Uh, you know, if 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 an editor or a beta reader can you know throw you that little bone. Mm -hmm. You know, per se, uh, you, that's all so much more helpful in the long run than just little, you know, uh, l you know, just kind of typo things. Because no matter, like, a reader is going to be able to tell you typos, because there's going to be typos even in uh, major published stuff. I, I, f mm -hmm. I found ty typos oh, yeah. with paperback <laughs> books that I that I've gotten. So. Yep. Uh, Unless it's drastic, uh, you what you really should be looking at are those minute details that you know will drive a person out of the story rather than the text. Yeah, yeah, excellent point. Yeah. 
Yeah, speaking like I, I and Aaron mentioned about education, meaning that I always tell my students if the if the mistake is big enough to where I have to stop and try to mm. figure something out, we got a problem. But mm -hmm. if you know you dropped off an apostrophe and it still flows go along, it's you know that's not what we're talking about, right? So yeah. I mean, yeah, that's definitely. Um, I don't. I don't know how specific you want to get, Aaron. So if I go too far on that, just let me know. But um, how how much uh, should uh, an, an indie uh, budget for the for their editing package? One, you know, we talk about you know, finding as much free stuff as we can. But let's say you're sure. serious about this. You want this to be your career. So what kind of what kind of budget should we be looking at? Um. Let's let's just take an, a ballpark number. Let's say a hundred thousand words. That's your manuscript. It, for that, I would set aside a grand. Okay. Just as a as a rule, figure figure ten dollars per thousand words. Um, I don't charge that much, and if you come as a referral, I charge even less than that. If you're a veteran or active military, I also give you a discount. Um, other editors that I've I've looked at online, they kind of charge in the ballpark there. If you go to the Editorial Freelance Association's website, I think it's EFA dash. Um, God, what is it? I'm not remembering it right now. But look up Editorial Freelancers Association. They have a, a rate sheet that that they'll pop up, and that shows you kind of a, a rough breakdown of all the different kinds of editing that are out there, and a kind of a loose either hourly or by thousand word or by page rate. Um, but it pretty much shakes down to if you got a hundred thousand words. Put a thousand dollars aside. You probably won't spend all of it. You might, um, but that's a that's a good ballpark figure to start with. Okay, that's good. Okay, so since I don't do the maths, if my book mm -hmm. is forty to fifty thousand words, mm -hmm. just Five, half that. <laughs> yeah, you know, chop There's it. There's not half. like a minimum. Uh, I don't have a minimum. Okay. No, I I want to edit. I okay. want to get paid for I want to get paid for reading stories and helping people make them good stories. So send me what you have, what however big it is. Um, you know, we, we agree on a on an estimate when we set the contract up. You pay a retainer based on that. When you actually deliver the manuscript, whatever the word count ends up being, you know, we, we the final payment comes off of that. But um, so if you, you ask know, us to add twenty thousand words and we do, then we'll get charged for the higher one. No. Because um, what you're going to send me is going to have a, a word count, right? That, and you're going to pay me based on the word count you send me. Okay, I thought so you were saying if, based on the when it's all done. No, 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 no. So okay. um, maybe, maybe this will help. My um, my procedure might be a little bit different from other editors, but what I do is, uh, you know, I get a sample from a writer, I do my comments, I send it back to them. They say yes, I want to hire you. We put a contract in place. They give me a word count for that contract, and they pay me a retainer of twenty percent based on my per thousand word rate. Mm -hmm. So if they're a referral, they get the preferred rate. If they're coming in cold through my website, they get the website rate. Um, and if they're military veteran, they get that, that discount. Um, so the referral is 20% of the total project, or the, the retainer, 20% of the total project. That comes in at least a month before my start date, anytime up until that point, but I needed at least 30 days before our, our start date. And then when you send me the manuscript, you give me a 30% payment. So now you give me half of it. When I get the manuscript back to you, you give me the final 50%. And mm -hmm. that's that's it. So if when I return that manuscript to you, I say, I really think you need to add you know, a lot of material, and here's where you can add it, I tend not to say how many thousands of words, but you know, I, I, I mention what I think you need to add, and I leave it up to you to be, you know, well, how big should it be? Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't charge you for that. And when you get it back to me as the second pass, I'm not going to charge you if you've, you know, added significantly to it because I'm only going to be reading that new stuff okay. in great detail. So. Okay, that makes sense. I have a question before you get to any more on the site. How did you, how did you get started doing this? I don't know if we've covered that already, but I went on, oh. um, like I've done it here and there for friends, but how did you mm -hmm. actually get started doing it? It was all Colin's fault. <laughs> yeah, it's Wham. all Colin. <laughs> I'm Colin Barnes. Yeah. Well done, Colin. Good job. <laughs> yeah, he, you know, it was it was one of his uh, one of his novels that's in the Codebreaker series um, that I did that beta read on, and the the next one that he wrote for it 
he hired me as the editor for it, and we just went from there. He put my name out to a couple other people. David Beers um, is one of them. He's been consistent. He's sending me his Devil's Dream series, uh, the Singularity series, and now I'm working on another one for him. Um, another author came through, and then a couple others. And then once Colin and Darren started working together, Darren turned into this powerhouse of referrals. Mm -hmm. He just kept funneling people at me. Um, I didn't. I so missed the just, part when you said Colin was the first one. I, I must have missed yeah, that. Part. Yeah. I mean, I I did edit for people um, kind of off and on. I guess the way you, you mentioned, you know, for friends and for the occasional person, I would uh, I would put a Craigslist ad out now and then. I get some some academic writers who had work they needed done. This was back when I was when I was in academia. But um, Craigslist. Yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like my hair shirt days. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, from the should we go, from, uh, Xavier? You had a question, I think. Let's go to you. Yeah. I, I got seven questions. Holy! Right. Well, okay, it's only an hour show, Xavier. Come on. I, I know. I know. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have to try to choose through them before people start to uh, ask more of them. Um, Okay, so uh, you hear the phrase that art is never finished, only abandoned. Mm -hmm. um, as as an author and editor, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, we you know we get to a point where we have to send it off to people uh, because of internal bias. You know, it, it's always going to be mm -hmm. there. Um, so how do you, as the editor, uh, decide when the art is finished? Uh, well, I don't. I don't decide when the author's art is finished because it belongs to the author. Um, you know, I when oh, I respond oh, yeah, to no, it, I, I mean yeah. uh, on that on that last pass where it gets that oh. final point. Um, well, if if I see anything in the in the second pass that still stands out as an inconsistency of characterization, or uh, an undeveloped plot point, or a plot hole, things that will confound a reader. You know, like like Wade was mentioning, um, mm -hmm. things that will make the reader go, huh? <laughs> anything like that. I'm like, you still have work to do. But if it feels complete, cohesive, and coherent, you know, my I'm like, you know, you you've done a good job here. I feel like this is a readable story. Um, I'm not gonna, you know, uh, praise things that I don't feel are praiseworthy. But neither am I gonna continue to drag and bog on the author's time. And say you, you really should fix these little things up. You know, that's that feels to me like nitpicking and, and unnecessary sandbagging, really. <laughs> mm -hmm. No. If yeah. Aaron says good job, this is a readable story, I'd be like, well, I'm having a drink. I did a thing. <laughs> freaking, freaking dancing, doing a jig. <laughs> I I did something today. <laughs> <laughs> I need a pizza and a box of wine. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know, and that, you make a good point. When you reach a milestone as a writer. Reward yourself. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I treat it. yourself. Yeah, that's absolutely. Maybe beating yourself up all the time isn't uh, conducive to good writing. <laughs> no, you see, no, the pattern was: you finish the manuscript, you buy the really nice bottle of scotch. That way, you've got something to punish yourself with later. <laughs> <laughs> and then you do it, and then you move on, and you write the next thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so, next question: What do you got, Xavier? Let's see here. Uh... Okay, so uh, you have your own series, the uh, the serial uh, The Gods of uh, Chicago. I was mm -hmm. about to say Manhattan, and I would have been an idiot. <laughs> no, I, um, I, I, I've got Gods of New York in the back of my head, but no. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you, at least you're carrying on with that. That was going to be the second question. So um, uh, how do you juggle uh, your own writing time amidst the plethora of different clients and different manuscripts you have coming in? Like, how how do you be a, an author amidst being a busy editor? Well, I can tell you how a friend of mine does it, um, and this is how I should do it. <laughs> he sets aside um, his morning hour when he, the first hour at his desk is spent writing or working on his, his, his manuscript, whatever it is that he's doing, whether he's revising or just kind of skimming or actually putting words on the page, new words, the first hour of the day is for that. After that, he breaks and he goes into his editing and his, his other tasks. Um, what I do is I sit down at my desk and I start editing. <laughs> 
So my, my current work in progress is stagnant and has been for a few months, and I need to get back on it. Um, I've, I've fallen out of the habit, but that's that's the way to do it. Uh, is, you know, treat it like every other job, break it apart and say, okay, this hour of the day is for this, this hour of the day is for this, and so on. Cool. Um, we have another uh, question from the audience. Uh, mm -hmm. Rob and James asks, uh, what's it like to adapt a new writer's voice, and how do you comment and still preserve that voice? Um, well, each, yeah, each writer is going to be distinct, and when I get the sample material from them, that usually gives me a good idea of, of what that voice is going to be. Uh, you know, I might pick out, fr I might identify some phrases that feel like, okay, this is a phrase the writer likes to use, or this is a, a way of, of framing dialogue that they like to do. Um, and so when, it, when I'm commenting, typically what my comments are going to entail are suggestions to better explain or make more clear what they have already said. Um, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll point them to that, saying, you know, you might want to say something that, that addresses this point in the paragraph. You know, you have the character focusing in on the pain of the loss of their parent, but then they, they say this line down here, and it's like they're eating ice cream and they're happy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you what need to transition there, you know? Yeah, so how did you transition from that, that moment of loss and sorrow to this joyful summertime with ice cream? Um, here's an idea. This might be it. You know, and, and it's, but I tend not to do more than one sentence of suggestion. Sometimes I have authors that say, go ahead and just write stuff in. You know, that's fine with me. And I, you know, I'm using track changes, so they'll, they'll be able to see what I added and, and what's mm -hmm. originally theirs. Um, but I tend not to do that unless I've got the carte blanche from the writer. I won't just automatically assume it's okay to line out things and rewrite stuff. That's, that's not okay. <laughs> when you say track the, sorry, sorry. There. Do it. Oh, just on the track changes, are we? Are you only using Word documents then, or, or you have uh, Scrivener? Yeah. I do have work? Scrivener. Okay. I do have Scrivener, and I have used it. Um, I love the comment function on Scrivener. It's it's really easy. It works very much like Word. The uh, the navigation of the comments is a little better. Um, I've not had as much practice using Scrivener for editing as I have for writing. I yeah. love it for writing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the most most of my writers will send me Word documents. I do have one writer who's now we're using Google Docs, and that works just fine. It's oh, basically cool. the same thing as track changes, but it's also saved automatically in the cloud every time you do anything, so you'll never lose it. So that's well, never. <laughs> right. But it's, we're, yeah, we're not it's, trying it's to system. advertise Google here. <laughs> no, no, it's a. It, it works just fine. So. Okay. Go ahead, Xavier. Sorry, I cut no. you off. Yeah, no, I, I was but kind of asked the same thing. Like, uh, do you ever you don't uh, do any kind of uh, traditional uh, redlining as far as like printing out things on paper and stuff like that? You're you're more of a dig digital as far as things go. I yeah, I am a digital editor. I I used to use a red pen or you know other colored pen <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for uh, when I was teaching. But that's when I was dealing with a four or a five page double spaced yes. twelve point font one inch margin paper from a you know a, 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 an English learning writer who was telling me about their summer break. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have any pet peeves? Like uh, some editors, uh, like especially copy editors, obviously will get you know torn up about splitting nev negatives and Oxford commas and shit like that. <laughs> But uh, is there any like certain things that really irk you? Since like obviously you're you know more of a developmental editor, so uh, is there cer certain things that just those are the warning signs where you just you know strike one, two, and three, and you send it back to the person? <laughs> I've actually I've never sent anything back um, incomplete. That's not to say I haven't wanted to. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> But uh, as far as things that make me just cringe and, and you know, I, when I'm reading it, and I'm like, oh, you wrote that. Um, <laughs> we, when, when I was on with Nick, I met, you know, somebody asked, you know, what are, what are the things you can mention for writers? Well, the double spacing after a full stop <laughs> has to go. You've got to stop doing that, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, Find and replace, please. Yeah, yeah. 
The other one is, um, oh god, <laughs> the M dash and the ellipses. This this maybe this will help everybody right now. An M dash is for when things are cut off, whether it's a character's thought or a line of dialogue. When it's being stopped short by an interruption of some kind, it's an M dash. When it's trailing off, it's an ellipsis. Don't interchange them. <laughs> They're not the same animal. So Matt Morrison that, that's kind of the... gets me on that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I used it wrong one time. No. <laughs> he was like, you can't do that. What are you doing? I'm sorry. I was tired yeah. when I wrote that. Yeah, those those are... I mean, and it, it's not like it irritates me to the point that I'm like, oh, this going right here. No. <laughs> No, it's just like, eh, you know, okay, here, you're doing this. And if I see it often enough, I'll stop commenting in the text and I'll just leave a final comment that says, go through and change all of your ellipses to M dashes and your M dashes to ellipses. There. <laughs> what about using um, them too much? Because I write about mommies, and so we get interrupted mm -hmm. a lot, and so she's always going, no, and she's losing her train of thought or getting interrupted. What? Well, there you've got it fitting with the genre and the, the plot. And the character, mm -hmm. so it's it's a part of that character's lexicon. The interruption okay. is a part of what that character experiences, so it belongs in the story frequently. Yes. Um, <sighs> if you have beta readers who get back to you and say that was really irritating, you might want to consider changing it. They all love it. They say, "No, that's exactly how I talk to my children," and that's then exactly you're golden. What inner monologue <laughs> sounds like okay. Yeah, yeah, no, then you're good. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll piggyback that's on my question. question. How about the? Uh, he said, or then they said, and then, or maybe, then you, when you feel like oh, you said dialogue tags. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I get tripped up on that all the time. So but, there was a great, oh god, there was a really, really great post that um, that went out from somebody I follow on Twitter, and I'm not remembering her name right now. And let me see if I can find it. Um, hang on. Those of you listening to audio, just hum to yourself for a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm searching. <laughs> I'll, try find, I'll try and find it quick. I can't guarantee I will. <laughs> if we had an ad read, we could put it in here. <laughs> <laughs> for all your editing needs, please see. Here. Okay. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not finding it, so I'm going to come back real quick here. Um, what are we but, looking for? I can try to look. Well, it was it was uh, it was a great blog about uh, dialogue tags and context cues and how to use dialogue tags well and when you need them and when you don't. Yeah, um, I don't know where that is. But we can I'll, add it in later if you email it to Catherine, us. Catherine Goldman, I think that was the person who sent it to me. She's an intellectual property attorney. She's on Twitter. Um, great resource for writers who want, you know, IP uh, information. Any, anything about protecting yourself as a writer online, anything pr about protecting yourself online as a creator of content, of, of being a creative online. Oh. Um, unless oh, you hire IP, her, is it is not legal advice. <laughs> it's just legal information. It is not legal advice unless you hire her. That's that's her disclaimer, and I feel like I should share it too. But she's What's fantastic. Her name? What's her name again? That. Catherine, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, Goldman, G-O-L-D-M-A-N. And that's her. That's her handle at Catherine Goldman. Um, I'm pretty sure she's the one that shared it. This was like this was months ago. But uh, dialogue tags. I'm from the Elmore Leonard School. Use said. Don't use anything but said, unless you absolutely have to. Really? <laughs> people ask. It's okay to say someone asked, but if there's a question mark, I know. You know they asked. Yeah. So why say it? You know, it's it's extra words. Um, you just Don't ruined my use... entire life. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just Sorry. so you know. <laughs> it's not me. It's Elmore Leonard. But he's dead, so you can't blame him. So blame me. So I blame you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will take the blame in his stead. <laughs> it's an honor, really. Uh, no, your dialogue made my life easier, be, yeah. Yeah, but Leonard, Len Leonard's dialogue is good enough to be able to simply say he right. said... 
And and then there's an amazing bit of dialogue that you know you absolutely understand the character in in that sense the the, the way the context yes. of the way they're I saying. I think what it. Aaron is saying is be that good and then yeah. contact me. Yeah. Strive to be yeah. that good. Absolutely, yes. strive yes. to be that good with your dialogue. Yeah. Use context cues as well. Describe the action around the dialogue so the reader sees what's happening. Show the character's face so I know they're speaking in a somber tone. Don't tell me they're speaking in a somber tone. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, this goes back I, to the show tell argument. Um, yeah, I th I think the, the there's there's the time to be able to show uh, some sort of uh, description to to the dialogue, but it's only at the very beginning of the sentence. You know, like you can say yeah. that person yelled, but only when it's just like shut up, he yelled, and then immediately give context to what he's yelling shut up about. And as the sentence go, goes on, you can understand why he's yelling it. And by the end of the sentence, you can tell that that person has quieted down because they're explaining it. Right. You let, you let the context and the dialogue show you what it sounds like and show the character's face. And that, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Okay, good one. Good one. Uh, I, you know what? I don't think I had anything more on my list. Xavier, we're kind of getting close to the hour, but how many, yeah. how many of your seven did you get? I got, uh, well, there's, I think there was about three or three that were addressed no matter what. So I think, uh, I think one, one kind of final one that was originally going to be one of my first questions. What, what is it that appeals to you most about editing? That's a good question. I love helping writers see the strength of their work. I, I love being in a position. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a real gift to have that authority, to be able to, to point to some things that someone has done and say, that's awesome. <laughs> and then to use that to help them make the rest of the stuff around it just as awesome. You know, because as, as creatives, we have this... We have this lifestyle where we are producing things that are very, very dear to us, and we're going to go and hand these off to other people. Mm -hmm. We're going to share them with the wider world and ask them for money in return. <laughs> um, and Please. that's a really daunting prospect when you think about it. And I love being a part of it and being able to play a role that helps all of those creatives out there find a measure of success at what they do. You know, and, and I don't, I don't take credit for it. Um, their success is. It rests on the quality of their work. But, you know, I, I take credit for helping them improve the quality of their work. And I mm -hmm. love being in that position because it, it lets me play a role in the creative enterprise that's going on in the world right now. You know, this this flood of independents that are coming out and saying, look, I can make stuff too. <laughs> Just because I can't get through the gate over at Simon & Schuster or, you know, or, or whoever doesn't mean I can't create. Um and it, it's just it's it's a wonderful experience to be there alongside someone looking at this thing they've made and saying, yeah, look at all this great stuff you did, and, and here's this thing, and if you did this to it, it would match all this other great stuff you did. And and getting that response from them and saying, like, oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and, like, when that whenever that book gets optioned for film and it gets, like, you know, a million-dollar film rights, you know, you can stand off the side and be like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yep. I'd like to thank my editor Aaron Sex for making mm -hmm. me millionaire. I, I, I want I'm, I'm gonna write that. I'm gonna write that speech and I'm gonna put Aaron. I'll put Aaron's name in there right now already. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> you thank God, your mom and dad, and Aaron. <laughs> yeah. No, Aaron came really? way before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you just have to make sure that you have the little index card that you can give Aaron during the speech. So that way, he can just simply read. Uh, I'm supposed to read. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Aaron, Aaron had to edit the speech, so it made sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was that was spectacular, Aaron. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, it's very insightful and really, really good. So um, we may even ask you back if we didn't scare you too much. So I would love to maybe you can pick your brain some I'm, more. I'm an hour, do it. An hour yeah. goes by fast, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah, and if, if we've got unanswered questions, um, you know, people oh, are free to, to ask more. them of me on Twitter if they want. I have one more you question. You got one more? Yes, yes. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm fine to stick around. Yeah, just real quick. Just go real ahead. quick. Um, go ahead, go ahead. 
because I'm too lazy to get them on a Skype call later. Um, mm. <laughs> if, if I want you to do all like all three of the ones in my series at once, would you want to do them individually, or do I would I pay you to do them all at the same time? What's the word count oh. again? Uh, it would be uh, it would be more than a thousand, but I mean more than a hundred thousand, but less than two hundred. Between the three, it would it would really depend upon what my calendar looked like and what your timeline for publication is. But I'm I'm happy to negotiate like a, a bulk order, <laughs> as it were. Mm -hmm. um, I would oh, they're need... already out. I just want to fix them. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then it would just it would just be a case of lining up, you know, lining up dates to do them. I would want to do them one at a time. Um, okay. You know, just like give me the first one, uh, maybe give me the sample first chapter of each book, so I can get a feel for how the series goes, and then give me the first manuscript. We'll work through that. I'll get it back to you. You know, because things are going to change and progress through the series. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure that my comments are aiming as close as possible to what you've got written. Mm -hmm. So I'm not suggesting something in book one that's going to make you have to rewrite book three entirely. <laughs> that would not be nice. But, yeah, and I don't, I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's why you know, I would want a sample chapter of each of them and then, you know, work through one at a time so that I get a few things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Matt Morris said it's 110,000 words for all three of them. Look at that. He, he adds yeah, them up. He, he, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if... he formats them, right? Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Well, again, Very thank good. you. Yes, and Michelle got her question answered. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, it was, it was Yay. Yay. Yeah. Uh, a couple of quick announcements. If you would like to be into the after party, I didn't even ask Aaron if he wants to stick around for that, but you're more than welcome to if you'd like. Uh, yeah. Just Throw your name in the comments, people, and we'll get you invites for a little after party. Um, next week on the show, we have Zach uh, Bohannon, correct, Michelle? Is that right? Yes. Yes. Zach Bohannon's on the show next week, uh, and uh, so that, tune in for that. And again, I'll just remind everybody, please, we could use some reviews on iTunes. Uh, if you haven't left us a review, we would really, really appreciate that. Um, also... Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, share us around the uh, internets, as uh, Xavier likes to say, because every social media share helps us out and keeps us viable. So, it's next true. week, next week we also get the announcement of the winner of our short story contest. So, I'm looking forward to that, and I hope everybody has too. So, <laughs> thank you all for tuning in, <laughs> and uh, we will see you next week. What do you say, Xavier? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I thought you were going to say goodbye to all the other person, people first. Oh. <laughs> goodbye all other people. <laughs> You're so professional. Okay. Good night, Michelle. Good night, Aaron. And good night, Internets. Good night, Xavier.